Being uploaded from the immigration is possibly uh, the worst thing that can happen on your planet. So if you wanted to know uh, how to prevent getting uploaded from the immigration and know what are the requirements and things that you need to consider, keep on watching this video. Philippine immigration is one of the hardest immigration to pass. Hindi ko maintindihan kung bakit gano'n na lang sila magtanong sa mga um, past, sa mga travelers natin dyan. Like, sobrang hira. Sabi nga nila, kailangan mo lumusap sa butas ng karayo para lang makapasa sa immigration. And the funny thing is that there's a lot of travelers out there that already have a approved visa, like US visa, Canada visa, uh, Schengen visa. They'll, they already been approved by the embassy. But once, uh, on the day of their travel, bigla na lang hindi matutuloy kasi hinarin ng immigration. So what are the things that you can do to prevent getting uploaded? So there are a lot of things to consider even though you have a visa or if you're a first-time traveler or kahit uh, you're someone na already been traveling around the world already and dami mo ng travel history, the immigration can still say no if they feel like saying no. So yeah, so the first thing that you need to consider is having a passport that is in good condition. So possible reason kaya kayo nahanap ng immigration is they see that your passport ha has damage or merong mga sulat or di naman kaya Dahil sa sobrang excited nyo na umalis, you were not able to check the expiration ng no passport nyo. Oh, so, it is better if you planned the trip ahead, make sure to check the information and yung validity ng passport nyo. Make sure it doesn't have any damage and that your passport has a 6 months validity. Second thing to consider is the visa. So, make sure na do your research if the country that you're planning to visit require a visa or not. Uh, and kailangan alam nyo din kung how many days lang ba kayo pwedeng magstay sa country na yun. So, mayroong mga country kasi na you can get a visa, like entry visa, pag nandun na kayo sa airport. So, you don't need to really, um, what do you call that, apply in an embassy. For example, going to Israel, you can get an entry visa when you arrive in there already. So, yeah. And just make sure if you do have a visa, the details on your visa, be familiar with it. Kasi mayroong mga visa na only restricted for a specific country. Even though you have a Schengen um, visa, mayroong mga Schengen visa na restrict lang ng embassy to stay, let's say, in France or Germany and you cannot travel in other places ng Schengen. The third one is that you should have a return ticket, onward ticket, or round trip ticket. Uh, this is very important pag dalis sa immigration. Ito yung unang-unang tinatanong nila is like, no, after asking for your passport, they always ask, where is your ticket? Kasi kailangan makita ng uh, immigration na you're not going to overstay in the country and that you know how many days you can only stay in that specific country. So if you are planning to, let's say, uh, after going to Thailand, you're planning to go to Indonesia. So you need to show a valid ticket that you are going to Indonesia after a specific period of days. So return ticket is very important. I would advise to have a uh, print out ng uh, travel uh, ng ticket nyo. Pwede rin naman na nakasave na siya sa cellphone nyo or sa laptop nyo. But of course, if it will take time, like if the immigration asks for it and then you need to open your uh, cell phone and look for the ticket, it will take time. And of course, with mga immigration na hindi ganun ka pasensya. So once they ask for it, you should already have it in your hand na ibigay nyo sa kanya. Ito po yung um, ticket ko. So having a uh, print out of your ticket is way better than just having it in the cell phone. At saka, if hindi mo kasi sinip sa phone, there are times, lalo na sa Philippines, lalo na sa Philippine Airport, like, mahirap ang internet. So, it's better to have it print. The fourth one is that you would need a hotel reservation and any proof of accommodation. Or if you have friends, family, or boyfriend, girlfriend that is inviting you to visit them sa country nila and then sila yung magpo-provide ng accommodation, please you have the invitation letter with you to be, uh, together with other supporting documents from that inviting person. So, sa mga... 
travelers dyan na papunta ng Schengen countries. Kung ano yung pinasa nyo na nag-apply kayo ng visa, it's better to have as well copy na pwede nyo bitigil pagdating sa alis nyo. Just in case to show to the immigration na I do have my, my friend who's, who's going to provide accommodation. And ito yung invitation letter niya. And then ito yung address, contact number, email address, passport number, resident number. So, if the immigration have question or doubt regarding this person, they can either contact them to just confirm if you're really related to that person, if that person is really inviting you. So, lahat ng question na meron si immigration, that can be answered by just like reading the invitation letter. Fifth one is a travel itinerary. This is especially for those applicants or travelers na pumunta ng Schengen area. So, there are, hindi siya madalas, but pag nakachem po kayo ng immigration, na medyo matano at medyo mahigpet, they might ask for your travel itinerary. So, it is better to show them na it, have it print out again and show them your travel itinerary para makita nila yung mga plans nyo. And I mean, hindi lang for the sake of immigration. I mean, it's also good to have your travel itinerary with you na para rin makatulong sa mga plans nyo from day to day. But yeah, it is still best to have uh, travel itinerary with you. For those employed applicants, kahit saan kayo mag-travel, uh, pagdating kasi sa immigration, lagi nila tinatanong if you are working or not. Kasi they're trying to avoid uh, travelers that is going to a specific country and then look for a job there. So, pag sinabi nila if you are planning to look for a job in in Indonesia, in Germany, and Spain, and you say, no, I'm not looking for a job because I am employed here in the Philippines. So, if you've mentioned to them that you are employed, you need to show proof. So, ano nga ba yung mga pwede nyo patunay na may trabaho kayo sa Pilipinas? First is a company ID. It is better to always have that. And then, uh, COE or Certificate of Employment. And then, you would need, of course, an approved letter of leave from your company. Kasi syempre, magtataka sila if you're going for a long vacation and then you told me that you have a job. So, gusto nilang makita if your uh, employer allowed you to take this vacation. So, don't forget those three important things if you are if you're employed. Now, if you're someone who's self-employed or freelancer or you have your own business, you would need to have with you your business registration permit or let's say DTI, um, mayor or barangay permit. And then if you're a freelancer, you need to have like a contract or like let's say letter from the company or like website that you're working with or if hindi available yung ganyan, at least have proof na in this way kayo nakakaroon ng pera, in this way kayo uh, nag-work or what kind of freelancer you're working with. And yeah, so at least kailangan talaga na may patunay kayo or supporting documents sa mga sagot na ibibigay niyo sa immigration. So lastly is you need to show a proof of financial capacity. So this can be in terms of uh, debit, credit card, or cash on hand. Kasi syempre, kailangan nilang makita that you can uh, support your travel expenses. Lalo na, pwede kayong magkaroon ng problema if you say that, that you're not employed and then makikita nila on your ticket that you're planning to travel for like one whole month in Schengen. So how can someone who is unemployed be able to travel or do tour around the Schengen area or be able to visit Germany or be able to do uh, Asia tour? So, diba? Questionable din siya. But then of course, kailangan. So, yun, ipakita niya sa kanya na even though na unemployed ka, there is a person that is willing to sponsor or pay for all your expenses. And words is not enough. You need to prove them that you do have a sponsor. So, you would need to have a sponsorship letter with you and then affidavit of support or guaranteed na form na para request ng sponsor mo dun sa municipality nila. This is especially dun sa mga nag-apply ng Schengen Visa na meron mga sponsor. Ka yung, di ba, pag nagpasa kayo sa, ano, sa embassy, pag apply mo ng visa, meron kayong mga requirements coming from the sponsor. So, before uh, submitting everything sa embassy, make sure to have a photocopy na pwede nyo dalhin sa day ng alis nyo para ipakita sa immigration just in case they ask for proof na financially you can support your expenses. And of course, uh, it is still better to also maybe have a proof of relationship to the sponsor. It can be picture, birth certificate, if 
pinsan nyo or kapatid nyo yung mag-sponsor sa inyo or magulang nyo, having their birth certificate picture together is good to really uh, convince the immigration that you're related to your sponsor. Even if it's boyfriend, girlfriend, having your conversation in messenger plus yung letter plus picture is good enough to prove to them yung relationship nyo sa partner nyo. So for bonus, on the day of your flight, uh, it is better to arrive sa airport uh, two or three hours early. So just in case lang na magkaroon ng sitwasyon sa immigration and they ask uh, a lot of questions or if may mga pag-uunta man sila and then kailangan ng second interview, at least you have uh, allotted time para hindi kayo maiwanan ng flight nyo. So everything na nagkaroon kayo ng problema, pwede nyo maayos if maaga kayong makakarating. And guys, always bring a ball pen because ball pen is your best friend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it will make your life easier, guys, when you sa immigration. Kasi di ba meron kayo form na pipil upon doon yung arrival form or departure form bago pa kayo pumila doon sa pila na papunta sa immigration. So, if wala kayong ball pen at manghihiram kayo ng ball pen, eh marami rin travelers na tamad magdala ng sariling ball pen. So, hiraman pa kayo and it will take time. Yung dito ang ato mo na dumating, pero dahil nag-aantay ka na magpapahiram sa inyo ng ball pen, kakainin niya yung oras mo. So, having a ball pen with you will really save your, your time, your life. So, yeah, it's better to have a ball pen with you. You never know when you need it. And then, make sure to fill up your departure and arrival form correctly. Make sure the information, the details is correct and avoid erasure. Kasi guys, syempre, uh, pagdating nyo sa immigration, huwag nyo nalang hihingin sa inyo is the passport plus the form na pinilakan nyo. So, it's better to have everything na naiintin ng kanila yung sulat and no erasure. And yeah, when you submit that, please, please, please always wear a smile and be confident. I mean, that's the key of, for me, that's also the key of passing the immigration to show them that you're confident that you, you're not doing something illegal and all your documents are uh, true and lahat meron ka, kompleto ka. Kasi, I mean, with me, I always, um, kahit kabang ka ba na ako and sobrang natatakot ako or maiyak-iyak ako kasi makaharangan ako ng immigration na hindi ako makaalis, I still wear that big smile in my face. So, I think it helps. It makes them uh, become nicer. They talk to you in a nice way. They also smile back. So, it changed the mood. Diba? And it really helps, guys. It really helps. If, if Compare mo naman if you're going to the immigration and nanginginig-nginig ka pa and pawis na pawis ka na. And, yes, no, ito po, ito po. I mean, they might, they might uh, like really think, bakit kaya may tinatago may ba ito? Ano, well, bakit ako nung siya sa akin? Eh? Then you might dig deeper dun sa mga requirements mo. And guys, please avoid too much talking. <laughs> Only answer yung um, question ng immigration. If they ask for a specific thing, answer, dun lang. If hindi yung magkukwento pa kayo, o oh, tapos yung family ko, tapos pupuntahan namin ito, tapos kikitain namin si ganito, si ganito. I mean, it, might, it can bring a lot of questions, di ba? Na parang the more you become madalal, <laughs> the more na makakapita sa immigration ng mga possible questions, saka may hihirapan ka pa. So, only answer kung ano yung ano sa inyo. Huwag na masyadong madalal. Dumalal na lang kayo pag nakalagpas na kayo ng immigration. And that's it. I do hope that you guys like this video and I hope that it helps. And if you do like this, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell button as well to be updated sa mga upcoming videos ko. And I'll just mention then, if you are looking for help with your cover letter, invitation letter, sponsorship letter, I can write for those travelers that are planning to apply for Schengen visa, you can check out my website. I do offer writing services and you will find everything there. So yeah, I see you on my next video and have a good day. Bye!